folks. Welcome to our second March meeting, uh, March 28th. And uh, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, next we'll have a uh, roll call, please. Mr. Worcesterbarth is absent. Ms. McGuire? Here. Mr. Cummings? Here. Mr. Gajewski? Here. Ms. Crasco here. Mr. Weed? Here. Mr. Byer? Here. Okay, the next item on our uh, agenda is the second public hearing uh, on the Van Etten Lake uh, Weed Control, Aquatic Nuisance Control. Uh, the first meeting, as most of you know, that have been kind of keyed in on this, the first one was the uh, to determine the need to have another uh, uh, special assessment district to renew the one that is expiring. And then uh, this one is to talk about the uh, the rates uh, are they pretty much uh, uh, okay or are they way out in left field or something like this so uh, so I need a motion to go in uh, to begin the public hearing I'll move that we go into the public hearing Support. okay it's been moved and supported that we do uh, start the public hearing the second public hearing um, Roll call, please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, if you wish to speak about the, you know, the, what this is about is strictly the uh, weed control issue. And if you wish to speak, we ask that you. Uh, Speak from the podium, microphone, please give your name, and uh, I don't know, should we use the four minute rule here tonight or not? I, I would think so, but okay. So we, uh, if you uh, have something you wish to say on either side of the coin, uh, you have four minutes to do that. So is there anybody? Oh yeah, a little introduction. Okay, thank you. That's fine. That's fine. I just thought it would be helpful to provide a recap of the required sequence of, ste of steps as set forth in Public Improvement Act 199 of 1954 that have brought us to the second public hearing this even evening to potentially create a new special assessment district for weed control on Bennett Lake. On January 25th, the township adopted Resolution 2016-01 to begin the process. On February 22nd, um, the first of two required public hearings was held. The purpose of that hearing was to determine whether the proposed SAD is reasonable and necessary. Also that evening, um, Resolution 2016-06 uh, was passed, and that set the date of this evening for the second public hearing. As Mr. Byer just indicated, the purpose of tonight's public hearing is to determine whether or not the special assessment and the respective levies are both fair and feasible feasible to, so as to accomplish the purposes of the SAD. The process by which the special assessment district will be administered differs from previous assessments in so much as it is done in arrears, with the township being reimbursed by the exact amount expended for the cost incurred on an annual basis. This amount has been capped at a not to see, exceed amount of 70000 per treatment season. The methodology for the SAD has remained the same using a benefit un, unit formula. So the mailings that went out had the maximum amount that could ever be le levied on the tax bill. And that was if the full $70,000 was spent. It's not expected from previous um, weed control years that that would be spent, but the um, thought process with setting that at 70,000 was to allow for excessive weed growth um, and if harvesting was needed or anything else. So. Um, again, that is a not to exceed dollar figure, not a guarantee of what would be assessed and levied on the tax bill, which would occur on the winter. Winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which those numbers um, go to the treasurer by October 
but they have to be there by um, the middle of September and they're on the tax rolls in October. <coughs> right. So by so September, we know exactly, we would know exactly what was spent. That dollar figure would then be used um, for the roll. So. Roughly, Ann, uh, in the past uh, summer of 15, 14, whichever, or both, if you have, roughly how much was spent? Uh, well, last year would have been maybe a little different year. It was a little bit less than normal. We're in okay. around the thirty thousand. There's been there's been a couple of years where it has gone higher than, um, you know, the fifty or sixty thousand dollar mark. But mm -hmm. for the most part, the fifty thousand figure has been okay. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you know a pro Do you know in the last ten years if you how many times you've crossed the seventy mark or never got to the, never never crossed that mark. <coughs> right. The 70 was really put as a high. I mean, it, the, I think Doug can go over those figures, you know, um, he has those with him. Um, but the 70 was, I, I don't think any, the weed it's control never thought that we would ever get that. Kind of it's thing. just a, a, a high end, right, just so that it would be there. 48 yeah. or 49. Right, because right. you can't change it after it's implemented. So, right. and then I guess I did have one other bullet, I'm sorry, that um, following this public hearing, the board may determine by way of resolution that the proposed SAD should proceed and begin as soon as possible as allowed by law. So that's the fourth step in this process. So just to. Okay. So and once once again, the letters that people receive or whatever information, mm -hmm. and it indicated what their tax would you know, would be it was the highest end possible. Correct. Mm -hmm. There is one thing we should mention. It was discovered after the assessment roll was put together that there, are, due to lot splits, as I understand it, there are actually more parcels. So the actual assessment numbers may be modestly lower than mm -hmm. uh, what was in the mailing. Okay. All right. I saw a hand over here. You know, Jim, I get up on this one all the time. <laughs> Doug Jagger, uh, my address is 7077 Mile Drive. I'm also on the uh, board for the Van Etten Lake Association, and I also steerhead the committee that oversees Lake Pro, the uh, lake management company that has been hired to, to uh, monitor our weed situation. As in the past, we've always had an assessment every year or every year, or you know, last year, nobody was assessed a dime. We had excess money left over from the last five years, sad. So it, in essence, what we did was we wanted to bring that down to within, I believe it's 5% mm -hmm. of that 50,000 in order to be able to go forward with this process. So, you know, as for the numbers, I can give those, uh, you know, last year, like I said, it was under $30,000, okay, uh, for, uh, let's see, 30, we had uh, for 13, uh, for 2014, I believe we were at 41, I think we used $58,000, uh, almost 59. 13, we were 48,400. 11, or 12, 48,000. And then in, in 11, we, we spent 36. So the intent is to keep it below that $50,000 50, bogey. And I, I believe I was here one other time with, and somebody from the board had questioned why we didn't use the full 50,000 that was collected. Well. You know, it's your tax money. It's my tax money. Okay, you know, spend it where you need it. Don't spend it if you don't need it. Okay, so we were fortunate enough by the process that we've gone through that we were able to. We, we did a very good job of eliminating the milfoil, which is the main culprit that we were dealing with uh, in the lake. Uh, we've got that down to something that we can really kind of attack and get and we've been able to spend a little bit more more time and effort on what we call nuisance weeds which are weeds that uh, uh, people that are trying to get their boats in and out or in, into certain areas of the lake so we're able to spend the money there primary purpose uh, for going up to that 70 bogey was was because if, in case we do have to harvest or you know this is a public lake People do come into this lake, 
and they could, you know, some new nuisance weeds or new uh, uh, aquatic weeds that are, you know, come in from other lakes, just like zebra mussels has gotten into every lake we know through attachment of, of boats and so on and so forth. So I, I, I stand up in favor that we, we do this, and I will give you my word, we're going to do everything we can to keep the cost minimal. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doug. Any questions? Anyone else? <coughs> my name is Art Sponberg. I live at 4591 Oak, down at the end of the lake. And my, my situation is it just applies to me. It doesn't apply to anyone else. It has to do with the assessment that I received. I have 75 feet on the lake. And so when I was looking at that, I certainly expected that I would have one, one unit. Well, it's common practice, according, according to Nancy, we've had several discussions, and it's common practice to, when you say frontage, you don't count just the front, just the lake part, you count the back also. And the common practice is to count the lake twice, back once, and average those three together. In my situation, when that, that mathematics is all done, I have 79.7 feet, which to me is less than 80, <coughs> and so I should pay for one unit. I just wanted to see if the board had any way to, it, it's been changed to 80, so I have to pay 1.1 units. And I was wondering if there's any way the board could make some kind of recommendation or it, do something about the fact that three or four inches has made $50 a year difference. And I don't know if anything can be done. That's just, mm -hmm. thank you for your time. Thank you. Nancy and I are getting along better now. Let <laughs> 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 somebody <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Hi, folks. My name is Dave O'Leary, 7106 Lakeview Drive. I don't have a problem paying the assessment. I know the milfoil, the Eurasian milfoil, is killing the aquatic life in the lake. I do understand that. But two years ago when they did that, there was a film on that water for three weeks, and I had to pull it out like silk. And it lasted and lasted and lasted. And is there some kind of alternative besides throwing chemicals in a lake to kill them? Isn't there like some kind of a, a hybrid beetle that you could use? Yes, there have been other lakes that have tried that. And I have heard found that. It to be ask. extraordinarily ineffective. Um, they spent, it's a much more expensive process and just did not control the issue at all. Okay, now is this going to, this treatment they want to do, is that going to take and put that film on the lake for three weeks by throw a lure in it, puts a big hole in it? Um, I, I think those were questions or questions that we'd have to talk to our lake manager in regard to the chemicals that are used and what are the effects of those <coughs> chemicals. I know I'm not um, uh, educated in, in that process, so that would be something that we could get a list of the chemicals and maybe the side effects that would go um, with them, and I'm not sure if what you're describing was caused by that chemical oh, it was. or something else. I checked into it. It was caused by that. Well, mm -hmm. that would be a, a question that we would probably have to check on in and regard if we get to an the east side wind, effects. Well, guess what? It's all up front. We get a west mm -hmm. wind. Goes to the other side, so everybody's affected by it. Right. So we can, and I we said can it was find that. Three yeah. weeks long has happened, and it was just before Labor Day uh, in 2014. It kind of clean, cleaned up. And I think everybody's seen it would agree. <coughs> Thank you for your time. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Doug, to your knowledge, yeah. have they ever used weevils on? Yeah. Weevils were yes. used originally mm -hmm. uh, when they first uh, determined that the milfoil was in the lake, and mm -hmm. it became a very expensive process. And it was something that we had to keep doing over and over again. Uh, we found that it was not controlling the milfoil the way they claimed it did. Right. Now, to, to address that issue is, <laughs> two years ago we had a serious algae issue. Okay? And the algae was not caused by the weeds or the, or the chemicals in the weeds. As a matter of fact, we actually did spend some money out of the fund to attract, you know, to attack the algae. The algae. Well, that was algae. Yes. 
it, a lot has to do with the temperatures of the water, and then you know, and then of course you've got uh, what comes in from the river. That's why you know I also am actively involved with the Pine River. Uh, we are trying to do everything we can to take care of the borders along the river there in order to to stop uh, you know the flow of sediment from from other uh, other plants and also animals you know because you get that and of course we've always had the septic issue mm -hmm. you know uh, some of the septics don't work but I, I remember that distinctly and matter of fact I have I have pictures of them at, at my house too I was on, I'm allowed and they were it was really thick and and there's not much you can do uh, if that temperature raises to a certain level that algae will grow if the nutrients are in the in the lake and that's that's what we did is we sent we put out some uh, stuff that would help lower the phosphorus levels because the phosphorus and the nit uh, nitrogen levels were so high due to it could have been silt coming in from the pine and that business but uh, you know uh, it's something that you know like it's there and then it's not there you know because it, it has a tendency like you said the wind blows and it changes uh, I know we do clarity testing in the lake and you can actually see you know particles of, of that green coming up from from the bottom oh it's almost yeah. 20 feet long yeah yeah right right but that that was our algae problem yes Wasn't it really hot that summer it was it was one of the hottest it was hot yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, you're not going to. As a rule, we don't normally attack the algae because it usually does come in near the end of the season. A lot of times, it's like right after Labor Day. It was the home of the August. Yeah, the worst. <laughs> yeah, that was an early one that year, yeah. and, and and you know we don't try to put chemicals in the lake. Usually our last, uh, what was our last, usually is, is, is near the end of June. End of, sometime, yeah. Early July. Early that's July. The er, that's the latest because by that time, everything has grown. The, you know, we've either attacked it or we're going to have to hit it next year because eventually those plants will die and then we'll deal with them next year. So I know we didn't put anything in. Uh, that would have been 2014. Um, seven fourteen was the last. Uh, actually, six thirty was the last treatment. And sir, thirtieth. You indicated it was around Labor Day, right, toward the end of the summer. Well, it was. It was in August. August. It lasted yeah. Almost like a couple of days. Yeah, it came in yeah. just before Labor and it was, Day that year. Uh, any particular part of the lake? The, the whole thing. Over. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Put a lure in there to put a big hole in it, and then you reel it in. You got like twenty pounds of. Yeah, uh, junk. The <laughs> wind has the wind will cause all those nutrients, and when, once they bloom, then they move. Yeah. Okay. Well, sir, uh, I, I can see you get up in the early morning when the sun just below the horizon. Water nice and clear. As soon as that sun comes up, here comes the green. You can see it though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's because it warms up that top of the water. And that's your algae bloom. Okay. Yep. Yes. And of course, it's coming up too. Okay. Anyone else? <coughs> yes, sir. My name is Norm Kepke. Uh, five I'm seven. sorry. Could you say it again? My name is Norm Kepke. Five seven seven one Oak Street, neighbor of Bob's Bongberg. Uh, I don't have a problem with the assessment of what's going on here with the wheat control. If we're not educated on this, where are the people that are supposed to educate us on this? Why, where's nobody here for that? Uh, so where we could possibly get some answers from these people, the professionals that are putting the chemicals in to mm -hmm. like, take care of this problem. Well, one thing I would say is uh, Vela, you know, the uh, organization, it has a annual meeting in the late spring, uh, am I right? When is that meeting? For first weekend after Memorial Day, which is June 4th or 6th. Yeah, in, in this very room. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I, I'm betting that they would have some of the lake management people there. Have they been here at other meetings? Yeah, yeah. but there's nobody here for a meeting here today on that. No, no, they won't come today. <laughs> but they would, they would come on demand. And okay. I, I haven't I, been to a I lot of these been, meetings. So I've I don't been know. to these meetings, and I don't live on your lake, but I've been to them, and they're pretty well attended. So. Okay. I think. And I live on the channel. Yeah. Just about at the dam, and all the treatment that goes on in the lake doesn't affect anything in that channel. I brought this up at the last meeting. Uh -huh. uh, the weeds need to be harvested or something down there. Uh, you've been down there, Mr. Gajewski. You know what the weeds are like down there in, in the, the late uh, summer, yeah, mid-summer. You can't fish down there at all, and that's some of the best fishing in the whole lake, down in the channel, at the dam. And you From what I understand, they're not allowed to treat out. within so many feet of the dam. Then we got to harvest the weeds. It just flows out into the creek. <clears throat> then we got to harvest them. We can't flush anything down the river. That's the problem. That's that's it. Uh, why why uh, am I being assessed the same as somebody out on the lake that's getting the benefit of all this, and I'm not getting any benefit of it? Because something else can be done. Mm -hmm. That don't make sense. <coughs> say that that water changes over every 30 days. It's all going towards your place. Well, whatever comes from everything from the Pine River, all that watershed up there, all the little creeks and tributaries that dump into it, dump into Van Etten and flush all the way through Van Etten Creek, all the way to the Asable, all the way to Lake Huron. Everything goes through there. Yep. It's going to get flushed through. It's not going to affect anything in the river so much. Why, why is there a guideline at 100 feet from the dam? Why, why is that set? Well, you know we don't make that regulation. Well, yeah. let's find out. <coughs> Can we find out why? And why, why, why can't I get some benefit from this? Yeah. I have spoken with Pete uh, from Lake Pro about your situation. Mm -hmm. Somebody else already brought this to my attention mm -hmm. at a fishing tournament. That was me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you spoke to somebody. Friend, yes. And yes. He's already been notified, and we are going to look into what we could do. Okay. He said that he had gone through there in, in, in past surveys mm -hmm. last year, and he didn't didn't see anything up near the top that impeded his ability to get in and out. I it said, doesn't impede the ability. You just can't fish it. Uh -uh. You can't fish it. Oh, okay. I mean, and the people that water the people yeah. that do come through, they're they're constantly backing their units up to kick the weeds back out. When yeah. they go through, they're just well, chopping them up. We're going to see what possibly could be done, but of course, you're limited by what the law says too. Right. <laughs> yeah. We will be working. We'll get to the bottom of it. There we go. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. To the bottom. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. No problem. To the top of it. Right. <laughs> Anyone, anyone else? I tried to fish like <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. Um, well, we had to. Uh, yeah. Sure. <coughs> you know, I bought a place up here. Can I get your name? <coughs> Gary Van Ochten, 7297 Alabama. About seven years ago, <clears throat> I bought a place up here that was kind of totally run down and so forth. And, uh, pardon the expression, but dumped a lot more money into it than I'll ever get out of it. But it did uh, do something kind of amusing. Suddenly, all my neighbors were remodeling. And the whole neighborhood looks better than it did when I started. <laughs> now, I don't know if I started it, but uh, it's kind of nice to talk about. Yeah, now, yeah. I'm <laughs> up, in, <laughs> up in the northwest corner of the lake. And I've noticed that the water, there's a drawdown on the lake. I've heard uh, stories about how people have come in there to harvest the weeds and simply chopped them off and let them settle on the bottom of the lake. So why can't down near the dam or even up in the northwest <coughs> corner, can't we have equipment that will harvest the weeds by removing them? Or let's hire a bunch of college kids during the summer months who go in there and pull them out by hand if we need to. Okay. Are, are they, is the lake uh, of a, a depth there that that could happen? or is During drawdown, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Am I using, my using the right expression here, folks? Mm -hmm. I say drawdown? But okay. drawdown is at the beginning, uh, like now, isn't yeah. it? Yes. And at the end of the... In the fall. In the fall. In the fall. In the fall. Right. 
That's usually after the fact and before the fact. All right. Yeah. yeah. As of no right now, the lake is lower <coughs> than normal because of the dam being open. Right yeah. Now. That's what I noticed driving up 41 and seeing it. Yeah. And uh, if somebody could tell me exactly when this, because I've only experienced it about three or four years in a row now, this green slime, <coughs> pardon the expression, gets a little costly when you got to clean your boat out or have somebody detail it because you don't want to crawl around your hands and knees. But if I knew a couple of days ahead when it's going to come and when it's going to stop, I'll pull my boat out of the water, pardon the expression. I hate cleaning that thing. Yeah. Sorry, zebra mussels, I took a chisel and chisel them all the time. <laughs> Uh, pardon the expression, but I spent about an hour and a half, two hours today scraping them off a boat lift, an aluminum boat lift, scraping them off and uh, wire brushing them. Now, if there's a chemical I can treat it with, you know, my background is in aluminum, okay? Mm -hmm. I worked for, the, uh, for Alcoa for 26 years. Mm -hmm. And I look at what we're attached with and I said, this is not a northern clam or oyster. There's just too daggone many of them. But it, it's a great, this, I want to put this. This town, to me, having traveled as much as I have, and I've traveled extensively, and I've worked a lot with government agencies and so forth, but in construction. But this town has got so much potential that I say to myself, you know, when's it all going to happen? This is not Taos. This is not Harbor Springs. This is not Petoskey. <coughs> this is not... Uh, you know, the west side of the state. I moved from the west side of the state uh, to, to about two hours south of here. And I just look at this town and I say, wake up. This is a nice town. There's a ton of potential here. Okay? Yeah, I'm not here to e express my frustrations. It's just that I've met a lot of great people here. And uh, I don't know if he's running for mayor or not, but I put Martin at the top of the list because I've dealt with him business-wise. And let's, if we gotta pull the weeds out by hand, damn it, let's do it. If we gotta get a machine here to put a, pull them out, let's do it that way. But to chemically treat them, all we're doing, it's, it's like wood. You burn it and the ash falls to the bottom. Up in the north uh, end of the lake, off to the right just before you go up, up the river. I dropped my anchor off my boat. I've got, I've got an 18-foot aluminum boat. Dropped the anchor in. Last summer, I had to power it out with a 90-horse motor on my boat. I had to struggle because there's so much muck up there. Yep. And I wonder if the farmers know what they're doing, too. I don't know. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm Jane Lauber, and I live at 7227 Shorewood on Van Etten Lake. My family's been in the, on Van Etten Lake since 1931. Um, I have seen the lake go through all kinds of phases, and I really encourage you to pass this assessment. Vela has done an extraordinary job of getting weeds under control. Van Etten Lake is so important to those of us who live there, but also to the economy of this area. My area has maybe 55 homes in it. There are six of us there year round. The rest of those people come on the weekends. And when they come here, they buy things here. And they're very important to our area. So this lake is important to us who live here and us who are here today, but it's important to the economy of the region too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Pat Young. I live at uh, 7320 Alabama. That's the far northwest corner of Venetton Lake. Uh, I'd like to address some misconceptions about harvesting. Uh, first of all, it's against the law to pluck weeds out of the bottom of the lake. You cannot do that. DNR says you don't do that. You don't disturb the bottom. Uh, the second thing is when we did harvest one time, the weeds were cut and they were bailed onto some kind of a contraption and removed from the lake. They were not cut and left to fall to the bottom. Early weed treatment, or herbicide treatment, I should say, instead of chemical, it's herbicide. The earlier we can apply those to any emerging weeds, we'll kill them when they're very tiny. So they're not, it doesn't help to treat when they're at the surface because they won't die down that quick if they die down at all. We try and nip it as quickly as possible. That's why Lake Pro makes a survey, identifies what needs to be uh, treated with herbicide, 
And um, like I said, I could see sand bottom part way out into our bay when normally it was all weeds, couldn't even get a boat out. So there's, there's legal things that we have to follow, that we have to be aware of, and uh, Lake Pro takes care of all this, anything that, and the reason they can't put, uh, uh, I'm not sure why they don't put it near rivers to go down, probably so it doesn't affect anything on a, on a river. We are allowed to apply herbicides up to 300 feet from the shoreline only. If you run into weeds in the middle of the lake, go around them. We can't treat those. The law says we can't. I believe we can treat milfoil if it's getting to be impassable. But any other kind of weeds, we've got the restrictions. But I'm not complaining because our bay has been the cleanest and clearest in the, in the 30 years I've been here, you know, on that particular part of the lake. So, but I just want to clarify what we can do and can't do. Maybe the laws will change, which would be great. Um, but you, you can't yank them out by the roads, so forget the college kids. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pat, one question. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, we're, we're somewhat mm. I've been here up here now for what? Seven six, years. Three, seven years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the first couple of years, it wasn't bad at all. And even these past couple of years now, if I put my, start my boat up, I have to tilt the motor up uh -huh. to get out of the bed area. Yeah. Because if I leave it down, the impeller in my uh, engine, with the water squirted out for, for cooling of the engine, uh -huh. it's your water pump. Yeah, it's plugged up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we've so got all. Thanks to our, one of our neighbors, came down with a little tiny wire. So now I'm stopping about halfway out of our mm -hmm. bay, run this thing. You, you can, you yeah, I'd keep your motor up. I'd keep it just part way down, enough under the water, under the surface, to get out of the bay. We are getting more and more shallow as the years go by. A lot of it is the silt and any debris that's coming down the pine, it's filling up our bay. And unless we have some attention paid to that, which I have shouted loud and clear on it and nothing's happening, uh, we're just all going to have to watch how you use your motor. Very simple. I can do it. You can do it. Also, you can go out there and harvest the you know weeds in yes. front of your place yeah. yourself. Yeah. I have a big rake that I go out there where my boat is, and I go out there and rake it all up and pull it out and stick it in a compost pile, and it's great pot compost. It's good. <coughs> what is the earliest that they can start using the chemicals on the lake? Serving like you. We, we, we will start in June. Well, well, we June. Have, we have, well, we have to be able to identify that there's a weed. You can't just throw, you know, an herbicide into the lake and, a, the and lake, hope that it goes to wherever the weeds are. Doesn't the lake repeat itself as per se no. weeds? No. No, a matter so of fact, what, what he does... So you're telling me that the same weed has not been in the lake for the last five years? No. What I'm saying is, what we do is, is the lake management company comes out and he goes, you may have seen him, he goes back and forth and he goes, he spends a whole day mm -hmm. surveying the lake, mm -hmm. identifying where the weeds are, and what he does is he then comes in with a recommendation on where they need to where we need to treat and what they are. And what they are. And then, you know, we try to keep that in mind and we have to make sure people ha are able to get their boats in and out. Mm -hmm. You want to clear paths for those type of things. But see, you also want weeds for fish, too. Yeah, so does he need a boat ride in May? He's in, he's got his boat. He brings his own boat out. Mm -hmm. So does he need a, a boat ride in April? Mm -hmm. so uh, he'll come out in May. In there, yeah. see, the water has to be warm enough for anything to start to emerge right. for him to identify. It. And right. it's usually end of May for his degree. So what you're telling me is the, the lake water temperature has to be a certain number before he will come up. Usually that's the case. No, <coughs> the weeds are going to start growing at a certain temperature. So what's that number? I don't know exactly. Uh, uh, folks, we're, get, we're getting a little bit off the track here. Then. <laughs> to, to, tonight, I mean, <coughs> some of these questions that they're talking about here about how to get your boat in and out and so forth, I, again, I will say it. Um, and. Uh, 
the first weekend, it's a Saturday after Memorial Day, right <coughs> here in this room, there will be signs all over Van Etten Lake Vila meeting Saturday at what, 10 o'clock, 11? Yeah. 10? Yeah. And that's the place to ask these kinds of questions about what do you do with the weeds or how do I get my boat going and so forth. But tonight we're we're trying to talk about you know the rates and uh, are you in favor of, of weed control assessment and so forth. So let's try to stick to that. Yeah. I just have one comment. I mean these questions. <coughs> my name is Les Krieger. I live in Flint, Michigan. My address up here is 7263 Loud Drive. These comments up here should make this board, the township board here, aware of the situation that is happening on Vanetten Lake. Considering this is a public lake, mm -hmm. anybody that uses the lake is going to run into some of these issues. So I would think as a board, you would want to know what some of these issues are. So maybe in the future, you as a board could maybe help the lake with some of the situations that we have on the lake with the harvesting or which we really can't do but the dredging down by the pine river where the logs are so big that we can't get them out right so i mean it's kind of an informational sure. for you even though it is taking your time away mm -hmm. but it, it's also educating you mm -hmm. and as a township board I would hope that you would all would want to be educated on all the waterways of Iasco County yep. because if you're not then you're losing economically mm -hmm. no I know that and that is the reason that I go to almost every Vela meeting to to do mm -hmm. acquire knowledge just like you've outlined here I can't say I've been there a hundred percent of the time but no, a but lot of the time you know and uh, I mean, I've been, our family's been on the lake since 1948, so I've mm -hmm. seen a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I agree with your you. Time. I mean, this, this lake is uh, totally within the uh, boundaries of uh, Oscoda Township, unlike Cedar Lake, mm -hmm. which is only about a third in uh, Oscoda Township. Uh, so, we realize it is a, a kind of a jewel for us, you know, and. Uh, so we're concerned with this. But also don't think that we're pushing off the information. This no. isn't mm -hmm. also the first time that we've heard the information. We may not remember all of it mm -hmm. all the time, but we have been pretty well educated on quite a bit of this, including the riparian rights that are regarding Van Etten Lake and, uh, and uh, exactly how that affects property values, regardless of it being a public lake or not. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, real quick. <laughs> Lake Marguerite, or the center of the state, the other side. Mm -hmm. Several years ago, was dealing with the Army Corps of Engineers for a similar problem, similar situations. And I came up about that information about it because there's a state agency of some kind that it's in Grand or something like that, or Gamer they talked to one day. And one of the things they said was keep an eye on the Army Corps of Engineers which I thought was unusual for a lake. But they had something positive going with Lake Margarita for Crayon. Now, that might be something you might mm -hmm. want to check into and check and see what the outcome of that was with the Army Corps of Engineers. Yep. And along that line, um, I have a few copies up here that you're welcome to anybody at, you know, at when you're leaving or whatever, but um, dealing with, like we've talked about, the gentleman was concerned about why can't we for lack of a better word, flush things through the dam and get them so they don't have to stack up in front of the dam and so forth. Uh, what I'm talking about here is state officials that, you know, you, you need to bend their ear. You know, if you're talking about the state representative battalion or State Senator Jim Stamas <coughs> or the governor or whatever, you know, these are things that are beyond our purview. You know. And if you want to know phone number, <laughs> if you would like to know phone numbers or uh, mailing addresses or email, uh, it's right here. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, Carol. The governor ordered his phone pulled off. Yeah, I am <laughs> Excuse me, I'm Carol Plunkey. I live at 6603 Loud Drive, <clears throat> and I'm a member of the Bennett Lake Association and also 
president of the Pine River Watershed Group. Just wanted to say in uh, relationship to the, this, this special hearing, um, second hearing for the Special Assessment District, um, I received a couple of emails, not a whole lot, and w when you talk about Bennett and Lake residents, you're talking um, probably, well maybe Jamie would know better than I, but um, maybe um, four to five hundred around the lake and then back lots and side lots after that. And so when you only hear from two or three people that are complaining, I figure that we're doing something right. Um, but the two or three that I did get complaints from regarding being assessed another tax from the township was the complaint was they didn't want to be taxed by the township for anything. Just don't tax me one more time for one more thing. It really did not have a lot to do with they were against tax taxing for we control. It had don't tax me for one more thing township. Forget so, the police or the fire department or any of that. Yeah, okay. So it was more that it was more of an issue of standing up for their rights as a person saying I don't receive any benefit from this lake so why should I have to pay a tax yeah. um, and I moved up here 40 years ago and I've been here all that time and I've never been on the lake so why should I have to pay to get let the people that live around the lake pay for having weed control so those were the main complaints that I heard um, so in my opinion the majority of the people that show up at the Bennett Lake Association are very supportive of what that board is currently doing then secondly, I wanted to say when my husband and I came up here in 2002 and even before then, in the early, late 90s, when I would go to a lake association meeting, they were talking way back then about what to do about weeds on the lake. So they evidently did not do th anything up here for a long period of time. And when you let a lake go for a period of time and you put it in all the variables that create weed growth on a lake, including invasive species coming in, which were not there before, they figured they had to do something. And so in response to this gentleman's question, they started off wanting to do something ecologically responsible and doing the weevils, which we did for a number of years. And they're a dollar a pop, and they're even more so now. But the company that actually we bought those weevils from came out and did an assessment and they were they were working on the areas they were working on but we could not possibly afford the hundreds of thousands of dollars that had been required to put them everywhere on the lake where they were needed and then that company Enviro Science actually has gone out of business now because like this gentleman said it's been proven that it's not an effective measure for getting meal foil out of your lake so we tried to do the ecologically responsible thing <coughs> first and then when that didn't work we we went to the chemical route and then we have to rely on the lake management firm that the township hires. Bennett Lake Association does not. It's a contract between the township, township and the lake management firm. And we have to trust their judgment and their expertise. But the best place to get your information about um, chemicals and why they put them where they put them and, and why don't I receive benefit, blah, 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 is to come to a Bennett Lake Association meeting which we have three times a year, the first Saturday after Memorial Day, first Saturday after the 4th of July, and the first Saturday after Labor Day. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we're getting down to uh, last call. Is there anybody that has not spoken before? This is your chance, your last chance. I do have one quick question. Why yes. do people that don't live on the lake get assessed for it? If they have the rights to the lake, if they have some kind of... My area on uh, Lakeview Drive, they have no access. Anybody there is an access. If you look on that list, my name okay, is on that too. And it's a, it's miles away from where the house is, but it's in that thing and it's, yeah. We'll take a look at it. So I'll ask, it's right on my road. I know where it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Nancy, it. she's right there. Walk yeah. down there and don't break a leg. Yeah, no, I know it's down a bumpy dirt road. Down, and walk down there. But the thing of it is, have you, I mean, if, if you think about it, who of us hasn't gone past that lake, and, and if you're any kind of a person that understands things, says, what a beautiful lake. Mm -hmm. Is that worth $25 or $50 to the people who don't live it's on the lake to, to look at that lake, to mm -hmm. get up, the people that live on the other side of Loud Drive, to get up in the morning to be able to look out and see that lake. So I understand that, that people, I don't want to pay taxes anymore. But if you just look at that lake once or twice a year, it's worth the $50 or the $25. And the people that live on the lake, they pay more because they get to look at it night and day. Um, I'm not always for the sweet assessment. I think I voted no last time. But that was because of the 
people that were doing the, the weed assessment. And once they changed over, and this, this company seems to be doing a far better job, um, I, I don't have a problem with it. I know that there's a lot of people, but I say just, if you want to get your money's worth, take a drive down and get out of your car and go look at the lake and you'll get your $50 worth or whatever it is you have to pay. So it's just my opinion. Besides, it makes your house, if you do have access and it's reasonable you're talking about going through a jungle I guess but uh, they're not all they're, well, they're not all like that though so, uh, uh, and uh, it definitely makes your house more valuable whether you use it or not none of us are going to live forever and eventually somebody in your family is going to sell that house and if you're smart enough to tell prospective buyers hey you have access to the, the lake and sort of a few more bucks for that house you know whether you use it or not so Anyway, uh, <clears throat> okay, um, that's it, I guess. All right, then I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Support. Okay, moved uh, by Mr. Weed with support from Mr. Gajewski. Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski. Yes. Ms. Aguirre. Yes. Mr. Weed. Yes. Ms. Grasco, yes. Mr. Cummings. Yes. Mr. Fire. Yes. Before we go on to anything else, we had uh, one gentleman, Art, uh, talked about a uh, matter of a few inches. I guess you round up to, he had 79 feet and some inches and you, and it was yes. rounded up to 80. Is that what you usually do? Nancy. Yes. Nancy. Uh, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting out of it. I'm the podium <laughs> police. <laughs> Okay, my name's Nancy Schwicker, and I'm the assessor for Oscoda Township. Um, there were a couple of questions relative to the methodology that's used for establishing the frontage on the special assessments. The method that we use, because not all lots are perfect little squares or rectangles, if the front of the lot and the back of the lot are different widths, the method that we use per the State Tax Commission's requirements is we take two front times the front plus the back and divide it by three. What that does in <coughs> essence is it kind of squares up the lot, putting the bulk of the value on the front of the property where the value is. That's the methods that's used for assessing purposes and we always round up or down whether we're talking about property, frontages, depths, uh, building sizes, we round everything to the nearest foot. So we use the same methodology in establishing the benefit units that we use for establishing the property taxes for valuation on the land. So that rounding is not just specific to the special assessment district. It is the way that we uh, attack or approach all of the values in, in different dimensions throughout the township and the assessing practices. And this formula that you use for everything, you know, mm -hmm. counting the water frontage twice versus the road dimension once. Uh, this is some local formula or this is the state formula? No, that's the formula that is taught in the assessor's training manuals. Mm -hmm. um, that method has appeared in the training manuals <laughs> going as far back as the 70s. It is the method that they still teach in the new training for assessing and for establishing land values. So it's not something that, that we just utilize here, it's the method that is that is taught for the appropriate method throughout the entire state and has been for going back as far as the 70s. Getting close to 50 years. Yes, yeah. and it, it may very likely have been farther going farther back than that, but that's as far back as mm -hmm. I looked at. And this also. rounding business is part of that? No, the rounding is not. It's just a, a common practice that, that when it, it comes to valuing things, um, it's more appropriate or, or easier to just round everything, you know, round up, round down. We, as I said, we use the same methodology when we're looking at valuing houses, garages, sheds, everything, we just round. Mm -hmm. Why was the assessment broken up into three categories of lot widths? Why not? two categories, five categories? Um, when we went through initially when this was developed, uh, the various methods of how it could be established, whether it be a per parcel or a per front foot or per benefit unit, all those various methods were discussed in, in great detail within staff meetings. Um, and it was 
we averaged out over the frontage of all of the properties what the average frontage was of the lots and we came up with an average frontage of 80 foot so that is why anything under 80 foot was one benefit unit so we then decide the discussion was if something was over was 80 foot or more um, that it would have more than one benefit unit it would be one and a half benefit units and that went from twice the average from the the 80 to twice the average size anything over twice the average size so anything over 160 foot to went to a full two benefit units the majority of the properties are out the lakefront properties are paying one benefit unit I believe it's close to 70 percent of the properties on Van Denton Lake have one benefit unit and then there's 20 some percent have one and a half benefit units and I think it's like six or seven percent actually pay two benefit units so if somebody had 60 feet of water frontage mm -hmm. you would round them up to 80 <laughs> no no if they had 60 feet of if they had 60 feet of water frontage um, and, and the back of the lot was 100 feet then you would be looking at two times the front plus the back so it would be 220 divided by three that would be like 73.3 feet is what their frontage would be you know but there are possibilities mathematically where someone could have a 60 foot wide lot and if the width on the back was 200 feet then when you'd use that methodology you're going to come up with a front a frontage of 80 feet or more mm -hmm. And again, that's the same method that we use for, that's the method recommended by the state, and that's the same method that's used for valuing property for property tax purposes. So um, it was felt that if that methodology is what the state is recommending for valuing property, then it seemed like it was an appropriate methodology to also use in the establishment of the special assessment district. Okay. Um question that maybe you can't answer maybe uh, you know, this is weird but uh, whether you're talking about a, a someone's property tax or their assessment for weed control mm -hmm. about how many of your properties what percentage of your properties do you have to round up or down uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say a, a fairly large percentage over 50% it could very likely be I'm you know off the top of my head I'm not sure I understand that um, you know a platted subdivisions be, because even your platted subdivisions the the frontage on the platted subdivision um, here in the village for example the lots are 48.5 feet wide mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. yeah. you know so it would it's really hard to guess mm -hmm. how many of them are are being rounded but but there's a fairly large percentage of them you know whether it be rounded up or rounded down okay you guys had your turn but I'm gonna let you you have something you want to ask yes. her but that will be it because really you know go ahead. no no that's just uh, that's a quick question frontage is it assessed on uh, survey points or is it assessed on the actual lay of the land at the lake shore my plot is 45 feet wide yet I've got 55 feet along the shoreline because of the way the sea wall and everything else is laid. Now, are you charging me for the 55 feet, or are you charging me for the 45 feet, the way the plan is serving? <clears throat> well, okay, with 9,400 parcels of property, off the top of my head, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, it would, you know, in the cases where we have platted subdivisions and we the plat is giving us a specific width, mm -hmm. then that is what we use. We yeah. um, if it is unplatted property and we have surveys, then we look at we do use what the survey has. If it is uh, what we refer to as meets and bounds property, it's not part of a platted subdivision. We're going to look at the, what the legal description describes as being the frontage How and long the dimensions. Has it been since that was updated. Pardon me. How long has it been since some surveys were updated? Um, well, whenever a survey is updated, that's up to the property owner. The township does not survey the property. The, the property owners survey it. Sounds like we're getting into something I bet you could settle by going into her office. <laughs> Why don't we try that? Why don't we try that? Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh,
<laughs> anything on the board since it's our turn here? Anything uh, regarding this rounding, uh, you know, uh, that you have an opinion on? I think Ann has something. I guess I, I just was listening, and I think it's standard math, my understanding, it's a standard math practice. Anything over five is rounded up, correct? Yes. Correct. If I'm wrong? Correct. So, I mean, that that's what you're discussing. I mean, you know, if it's, you know, I learned it in school. Um, I guess it was at school to area schools. I don't know if it's different someplace else. You, but, you, may, but you anything, may have had Mr. Sponberg. Yeah, I might have. I don't think I had you. I don't know. But. Well, you've been on the 10s, you've been on the 100s, and more surveys. I'm on the surveys on my lot, found it to 100s. And it's not just one surveys. Right. That's how they made pie. Okay. So I guess, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, it goes usually by the, I mean, you're looking at by tenths or whatever, or however you're, yeah. It's probably important to note that if, certainly we can change the methodology, but there will be winners and losers either way. Either way. So, yeah. Right. Almost I don't think there's any relevant problem. <laughs> it's just a, I'm right on the cusp. All the rest of them are going to off making a difference. You're going off from 79 to 8. That makes a difference. You're going off from 60 to 61 and 200 again to 211. That doesn't mean anything. It's just 79 to 80. Understood. Understood. Oh, it's in the next bracket. Yeah, next bracket, next benefit. Well, <coughs> so he goes up from one benefit to one and a half. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right, board members. All right, let's uh, let's go on. If you have nothing else uh, that you uh, wish to comment on this, um, next item is agenda additions, um, and we have one. Uh, we may have more than one, but. Uh, uh, in Bob's information items, <laughs> board members on Bob's information items, the water line easement update, we're going to make that an action item and it will be number three under action items. If the board is okay with that? Yes. All right. Yep. Anything else? Any other agenda items anybody wishes to? Uh, Uh, okay. Um, consent agenda is next. Uh, um, approval of the minutes from the last meeting, March 14th meeting. Anybody? Okay. Uh, financial report uh, payment of bills $80,109.40. Anybody have a question about any of those items? Okay, and the third part is uh, <laughs> we have kind of taken away 50% of Bob's informational items, uh, but Consumers Energy Streetlight Survey. Bob, you had a comment. We're going to get a little refund on that. Is that? They have offered a refund um, subject to an inventory that they did, and um, we are uh, attempting to undertake validation and, and review the maps that they provided that led them to the conclusion they reached. Okay. Excuse me, is that a question of which ones are working or just which ones have been installed? I, working, I believe, yeah. although we, we do have a number that are installed that we have deliberately not activated in some areas of the community. Yes, I yeah. remember some of those, like the one in my house. <laughs> right. Why aren't they <laughs> activated? <laughs> uh, we did a survey uh, when the lights on Wordsmith were conveyed um, frankly, that area in the community had more illumination than the rest of the community, so uh, my recollection is we tried to establish a lighting scheme out there that paralleled what we have in other parts of the community. Okay. So there are a number of fixtures that are in place but not illuminated, and there's a specific plan that was approved by the board many years ago showing that. And, Jim, I just have about the, the uh, payment of bills. If anybody ever does have a question about anything that's in that, if they would just give me a, a call at the office, I can go over it with them what it is. Because if you ask me what it is here, I may not know. But if yeah. you actually have a question about something, feel free to call. Um, I can pull it out 
give you a copy, whatever. Um, sure. So just, just to let you know. And board members do get this uh, agenda with support materials uh, sometimes as early as <coughs> Thursday afternoon, late or Friday at least, so mm -hmm. there's time to call you. So. Yep. Okay. Um, well, um, Ian, you're, prob you're probably going to talk about your informational item this is, mm -hmm. when you get when we get to it, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's it's more of an um, information on the agenda, not a consent. Right. Okay. Well, then I need a motion, yes, to approve the uh, consent agenda. So moved. Okay. Or Moved uh, by Mr. Weed with support from Mr. Gajewski. I believe that we do approve the consent agenda. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion passed. Action items number one, scheduling of a second strategic planning work, work session. Yes. Um, during the recent work session, we spent a significant amount of time on, on current topics. And although we were able to get through the year-end budget review process uh, without the projector working, albeit, um, <laughs> we did not get to the goals and objectives. So, and, and uh, therefore, um, we are in need of considering scheduling a second uh, work session since the goals and objectives are sort of the core of the discussion and there was consensus at the meeting that we should effectively punt that evening given that we had a couple of board members missing and that was I think viewed as an important discussion so I have pointed out a couple of alternate dates here the 13th and 14th of April it's my understanding based on feedback I've gotten earlier today that the 13th is a no-go for at least a couple of board members so it would be the 14th or uh, presumably sometime the following week. Okay. I'm one of the no on 13th. So, so am I. I'm no on the 14th, okay. unless it's in the morning, which would be nice. That would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> morning works for me. I can't make the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Afternoon, <laughs> evening, but not the morning. So. What about the next week? <clears throat> Not available the next week. How about the 12th? No, I can't do the 12th. <laughs> Saginaw. Um, well, I guess I'm the only um, no show on Thursday morning. I can be here for part of it. I, I take my wife to tell us. Um, so I could pop in. That's about all. So, <clears throat> 14th? Or does someone 14th, else have a problem? 14th is fine. What time in the morning would you be unavailable? Is it a matter of starting? Virtually morning? the whole morning. I, oh, have, I, I have to be in Tawas uh, at about 7 o'clock, and I'm really not done until about 12. I see. Medical issue. I just so. Okay. <clears throat> Early Thursday is good. Thursday? Okay. Thursday morning. Pick a time. Nine. Nine. Good. Nine. All right. Uh, I need a motion. Nine o'clock Thursday the 14th. So moved. Support. Okay. Moved by Mr. Weed. Uh, support from Mr. Cummings that we do meet second work session uh, 14th of April at nine o'clock. Pending that we don't have somebody using the room at that time, which I'll have to check the calendar and make sure. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> roll call, please. Ms. Grasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay, number two, uh, request from a neighboring community for a support letter. Yes, uh, we have... Uh, correspondence from the City of East Tawas requesting that we provide a letter of support for a Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant application to construct several improvements uh, in one of the parks that they are developing. Those improvements would include uh, expansion of restrooms, showers, uh, and parking. Uh, I provided an overview of the project that the folks at East Tawas had given me 
and put together a draft letter for which I am seeking approval for the supervisor to sign so that we can get it back to them tomorrow if, if uh, the board is amenable. Um, they're looking to get it in the packet uh, prior to the April 1 submission deadline <coughs> if possible. Okay, any uh, comments or questions or opinions about this request? Do they usually, do we usually give letters of support to outline areas like that for things or is this just it it's more common with immediately adjoining communities mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say there's much of a track record there one way or another have we ever requested anybody write a letter of support for any of our projects we we have but normally it'd be uh, ensemble or Sobel, Chamber of Commerce, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since they, they specifically mentioned the Iron Bell Trail, <coughs> maybe that's part of it. Since we're part yeah. of that trail, they're, you know. It could be. Because they say it's to help people that are going to be on that trail. So that might be the reason why they we don't usually get them, but this time we are. Does it involve camping? <laughs> um, the improvements don't. I don't know, frankly, if they allow camping on that property, but these improvements mm -hmm. don't. My, my sense is they're putting us on the spot a little bit. We, we have 500 camping spots out at Old Orchard and other places. But um, that's not a deal breaker for me, but I'm a little queasy about it. But Why is that? Um, competition in camping. Well, they don't mention camping, though. I think that's part of the deal. I mean, but this is kind of like two completely different environments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to leave Old Orchard to camp somewhere else, then you weren't looking for the Old Orchard environment in the first place. Perhaps. In some cases, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah. The, cor um, the correspondence does say it's a, the, it's a day use er area currently. Okay. okay. All right. For the parking. Okay. I'll make a motion that we have the supervisor sign the attached letter. Support. Okay. Motion by Ms. McGuire with support from Mr. Weed. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, according to our agenda twist here, uh, we are adding the, uh, the easement issue, uh, water easement, uh, that was initially uh, one of Bob's informational items. And uh, perhaps we should make it something uh, more important an action item. So. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I had indicated in my report that I hope to be in possession of a document which I got uh, earlier today, and that is a uh, draft easement amendment for the water line. As you might recall at the last meeting, uh, the grantor of the easement, the original easement, had approached the board and, and requested that we consider uh, consenting to a, a, a new document uh, that would be uh, submitted in keeping with a replatting process. Um, I got a revised legal description as well, which is attached. Um, we have asked for legal review on the document as of earlier today, and the feedback received was that on page two, uh, there would be a preference from our attorney's standpoint that the first full paragraph beginning provided that the foregoing legal description, et cetera, be struck from the agreement. And the rationale is that we can't control the outcome of that uh, circuit court proceeding and we would be agreeing to extinguish our existing easement by execution of this document. Uh, my recollection is, frankly, that that might have been somewhat of a sticking point previously, so uh, the, t the two avenues I would suspect we might consider this evening would be to either approve it accepting the attorney's amendment or potentially approve it if the board is inclined to, to move forward with it uh, subject to any changes the attorney might find acceptable. Um, otherwise, certainly it could be tabled and we could go back and talk with the property owner in question uh, as probably was abundantly clear to everybody there is a sense of urgency here from from that standpoint and I have not had a chance to talk to anybody at this point about this proposed change 
Okay, you've given us three options, right? Yes. And uh, I kind of like the one about approve it uh, subject to any final changes that our attorney would recommend, but that's just me. Anybody else prefer one of the other options better? Is that a motion? Yeah. I'll support that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's a motion okay. not hearing anything else so um, <clears throat> okay uh, anything final any other comment okay roll call please mr. Gajewski yes mr. weed yes Ms. McGuire yes mr. Cummings yes Ms. Crasco yes mr. Byer yes all right we move on to uh, three informational items uh, first one and the second one both deal with uh, Spicer engineering I should probably uh, add a little bit relative to this easement too, although it's after the fact. I, I should note there was there was some communication, that I, a communication I provided to the board that talked about a 13-foot easement being there originally and our desire to expand that easement. This particular document would approve moving forward with a 13-foot width that was originally granted, mm -hmm. and uh, I just want to make that clear. Um, after talking with some of the water and sewer operations personnel, the conclusion is it would not be ideal, ideal but workable. So just should make that clear. Okay. Spicer Engineering, change order number two, Val. Yes, uh, there was a request made at the last meeting uh, that we ask our engineer to provide some feedback as to the basis of the original design. You might remember there was a change order approved uh, exceeding $9,000 uh, against which Spicer was going to provide a credit in buying back the original valve that was specified. This is the communication that the engineer provided. I'm, I'm passing it on for informational purposes this evening um, based on the direction of the board that was provided. So if there's any additional information, I certainly can seek that out, but this is what Ms. Garza had offered in response to the inquiry. Okay. Any discussion or questions of Bob regarding this change order? Okay. Next one, Spicer Engineering. Uh, <coughs> this has to do with uh, Mr. Pete Simpson brought to our attention, uh, not for the first time, but the odor coming from uh, lift station 25. Yes. Um, we had talked about the, the study that's being done on lift station 25 relative to the corrosion and the need to repair the wet well and uh, the linkage that might have with the odor control issue. So I had asked the engineer for an update on where that study process was. She has provided that. And then on the board table, there is a proposal to specifically study the odor control issue, not to deal with it, but to evaluate it. Um, and the estimate is $5,000 on a time and materials basis. Um, at this point, my suggestion would be that we consult with our contract operator also before establishing a direction here. They may have some feedback, so I'm providing this for informational purposes. However, if anybody has any questions specifically uh, that result from review of the proposal, there's some aspect that, uh, of the situation that we think uh, we haven't addressed, please let me know and we can ask for an amended or expanded proposal. So this information on the desk, you're, you're advising that we go ahead with this before we get into the $5,000 study. Uh, this, this is an outline of that this study. Is so yeah. I guess okay. my suggestion would be let's get some feedback from our contract operator before, before we do that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, this has been going on for a number of years. I've heard about the, you know, and I, <coughs> I, I I'm in total sympathy with people that have to put up with this, you know. So, you know, our former uh, trustee, Mr. Hinckley, used to speak of that, uh, and and other people live on the base and, and so forth. So, so uh, <clears throat> if we can fix it, I think five thousand dollars is worth it. I don't like on this agreement how open ended it is for their fees. At that fee schedule section, it talks about, you know, $5,000, but this is only based on what we've been told and anything else that comes up, we're charging you for it. 
I prefer that they have a, a more firm figure rather than coming later around and saying, oh, look at all this stuff we just found out. We're going to charge you more. Right. Like but not to exceed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And your third and final item, informational item, is uh, the uh, hot topic in the community here. Yes. This is relative to the private water wells and PFCs, um, an update. Um, we had a lengthy discussion at the work session of March 16th, and there have been some uh, events and developments that have occurred since that I thought the board should be aware of. Some of them undoubtedly already are. Um, but specifically, uh, it was announced at that meeting that District Health Department uh, number two, in cooperation with the township, is going to establish a voucher system so that folks can get potable water at the community center, um, at least until it closes at the end of April. They can pick up vouchers at the health department offices, and then we will keep a log of uh, the water uh, deliveries that occur at the community center, which will help us evaluate, I think, moving forward, um, whether uh, an alternate location would be preferable and the volume of, of water that we're uh, supplying in response to this need. Um, we will have to talk about uh, the community center availability at some point uh, in, during the month of April. I've also provided some information regarding a preliminary cost estimate from Spicer Engineering um, for water main extensions that would appear necessary to address some of the situations uh, that have emerged relative to private wells. I note that that cost um, is not uh, complete at this point in terms of at least one particular property that is included that may require another water main, plus there are uh, several wells that haven't been tested yet. So um, that, is, that number should be considered preliminary for the time being. Uh, we're going to need more information to fill in the blanks. But I think it helps to put the, the magnitude of, of the fiscal uh, impact in some perspective, uh, particularly for the folks we're talking to about uh, providing assistance to help address the problem, assuming municipal water would be part of the solution. I had some questions earlier about the map that was included um, with those materials. And, and by way of explanation, there is no key, so those questions were good ones. Um, the dark lines are the existing water mains. The light blue areas are locations where uh, there are, are potentially affected properties and municipal water appears to be available in the right of way or accessible with uh, easements in at least a couple of situations. The purple areas are prospective water main extension uh, locations and those correlate to the $443,000 estimate. So we will be using the map and the estimate, again, to talk to legislators and other folks about uh, potential assistance to address the situation uh, moving forward. Um, I also spent some time talking to the folks out at Pease Air Force Base where they had a PFC issue in their municipal wells. There, there are three, as I understand it, wells affected on the Pease property. And, the, and they are uh, part of the municipal system, and one in particular had uh, quite high levels of PFCs. They took it offline, and um, they've, they've essentially, through an EPA order, uh, gotten Air Force assistance in, in treating that while the other two they're monitoring. But in doing that and addressing the situation, they use the services of an environmental consultant, and that's one of the things we talked about at the work session. Um, and I've provided a proposal from a company called Weston and Samson that, that provided assistance to them. Their experience appears to be relevant to our needs should, should the board deem it uh, appropriate to hire a consultant. As I note in my report, there are undoubtedly other firms that could provide the assistance, but uh, I thought it would be helpful again in providing uh, some perspective on what the qualifications might be that, that would be appropriate in the cost of obtaining services. Um, finally, I wanted to let you know that there has been an active outreach to, again, legislators and, and folks that might be able to help bridge the gap between the 
uh, two regulatory <coughs> philosophies we heard about at last week's meeting. Um, there are divergent approaches from state and federal perspective to regulating this particular compound and those cause some, uh, that divergence causes some problems in terms of making assistance available that, that normally would be uh, accessible in this type of a situation. So we are um, talking to folks and making them aware of, of that problem. More, more to come on that, hopefully, although the process will undoubtedly take some time. Okay, I don't, I don't know how many of you here were at the meeting last Wednesday night uh, at the Methodist Church behind the Township Hall, but um, my impression, individual, is that the Air Force uh, was asked repeatedly you know, would you do something financially to help us fix this? And and they kept saying no. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, which is a federal agency in Washington D.C., their uh, standard is quite high uh, of how many PFOA and uh, various uh, chemicals that were we're worried about here locally. Um, <clears throat> and they said we are uh, quite a bit below that, so we really can't uh, commit to any money as long as we're below that. And uh, they, again, my opinion is that they were riding that baby forever, you know, that kind of like a firewall that, you know, uh, we're considerably below that. Now that EPA uh, deal was uh, set up in uh, 2009, so it's seven years old, and I, uh, I don't know how much new information about PFOS and PFOA, and et cetera, has come in the last seven years, but uh, um, the next day at an airport meeting, they, the same, basically the same team was there, and, and they professed to be really concerned about people's health, and I asked them if, you know, you sound very convincing and I'd like to believe you more if you would say, you know, would you go, to, would you, the Air Force, go to the EPA and try to talk to them at least to look at those seven-year-old standards and see if, you know, would you, would you be willing to do that? And I didn't get a, a good answer for that. They shied away from that. I, I didn't get a yes or a no. It was, I, I got, they had a lawyer there that, Gave me some legalese for about 20 minutes. And, uh, I don't know what she said, but <laughs> it wasn't yes. So anyway, um, that's kind of what the crux of what happened. Now, Senator Stamas was there at the meeting Wednesday evening, and uh, he asked if, if the laws uh, created a new lower standard than the EPAs, would they abide <coughs> by that? And they said yes. They said that two or three times. and uh, But then Tuesday, they refined that a little bit, or uh, Thursday morning at the airport, and said as long as the law, and I guess this makes sense, as long as the law is balanced, you know, Fox News, fair and balanced, and it isn't, doesn't just point at the Air Force, anybody putting bad stuff in the ground uh, is subject to this law, they, they would uh, abide by it. State law would trump uh, trump a bad. federal law. I had to mm. choke there to say yes. that. But. <laughs> no, it's not that it would trump a federal law. It's that they will follow the, between the state and federal, they'll follow the tightest restriction. <clears throat> but they do have to abide by state environmental law also. Yeah. Because we did regularly get inspected mm -hmm. by the state EPA agencies to make sure that we were in compliance. Yeah, it sounds like the... Uh, Regulations for making hot dogs. Michigan's <laughs> Michigan's recipes for hot dogs are uh, a little tighter than the average, I guess, around the country. So uh, that's the way they have to be uh, sold in this state. So you know, so similar to that. But anyway, um, Air Force is still out there, and they, I don't know if they're going to budge. And I don't know how successful the senator is going to be uh, in creating legislation that would fit this situation. I wish him well. So, anyway, 
Okay, uh, next we move on to uh, the Community Development Coordinator, Ann, and uh, you have an item that uh, deals with the uh, public uh, hearing that we had. Uh, during the public hearing uh, process, I said that the last step in this um, special assessment district process would be to pass um, a resolution to set the SAD in place. So to that end, resolution number 2016-08 has been placed on the agenda. If the board is inclined to move forward um, by way that it's uh, determined that the proposed special assessment project has been deemed not only reasonable and necessary, but that the proposed special assessments are also fair and feasible, and that the proposed special assessment should proceed and begin as soon as possible as allowed by law, it can pass that resolution as placed on the agenda. So, okay. Any discussion on uh, this <coughs> second public hearing? Okay. Then uh, I guess the next item is we move on to uh, resolutions, ordinances, and we have the uh, resolution that deals with this. Um, to be exact, it is resolution number 2016-08, and uh, it regards the uh, hearing on the weed uh, aquatic nuisance control for Van Etten Lake, and basically it says we go ahead with that. You heard a lot of testimony, not too much negative, really. No, that surprised no. me. Me too. Yeah. No. We did get, it should be on the record that we did, since the last time we address this general topic of weed control. We did get three more letters, uh, anti-letters, and one pro-letter. But I think, as Carol pointed out, if you're talking about, what'd you say, four or five hundred people if you get three, plus we got a couple earlier, uh, that, compare that to four or five hundred, So, but uh, board members should, you know, figure that in. I mean, you're well aware of it. Everybody gets the same packet here. So, mm -hmm. okay. What you wish? I'll make a motion. We approve resolution 2016-08. Support. Okay. Motion made by Ms. McGuire with support from Mr. Weed that we do adopt resolution number 2016-08. Anything further? I just want to thank Van Etten Weed Association, Lake mm -hmm. Association, for doing a good job of informing us of what's going on and monitoring it. And that makes it a lot easier for us to, or for me to make a decision. So thank you very much. Absolutely. It was very informative. Very. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Roll call, please. Mr. Weed. Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Resolution has passed. Okay, uh, we move on to other, and uh, the uh, first of two items is uh, a resignation from a key member of the uh, township personnel. Key member indeed. Yes. Um, this is a resignation from our executive secretary, uh, Mary Lawyer, who has been with the township uh, for over 20 years in that capacity, almost 24 in total. She will be leaving employment of the township on May 4th of this year. And I'm suggesting uh, that the board her resignation with regret. In doing so, uh, I think it should be noted that she has been a trusted and dedicated member of the administrative team over those years. Um, a great deal of what we've accomplished together, Mary had a significant uh, role in, and um, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that and thank her for her service to the community. Thank you, Bob. Uh, as I said, I don't I talked to you earlier today. I do, do not envy you trying to find someone uh, of her equal. Yes. Um, this is Mary Hart that some of you know about. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, she'll be a big loss, so, in my estimation. So. Okay. 
I've worked with Mary for 19 of those years, and um, she, there's only been a couple people that we've worked with at the township that I can truly say that it's going to be some hard shoes to fill, mm -hmm. and I'm going to miss her. Okay. Well, I make the motion that we accept her resignation with lots and lots of regrets. So. Support. All right. Byron Weed. Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Aguirre? Yes, with regrets. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, final other item is the Water Department uh, bad debt write off. Yes, a small amount of 2427 relating to a water account um, debt that can't be collected at this point. Okay. Uh, do we have questions about this $24.27? And and okay. I need a motion to go ahead with the recommended uh, write off. So moved. Support. Okay. Uh, motion by Ms. Carrasco with support from, I believe, Mr. Gajewski. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Cummings? <coughs> yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Now we are at the second public comment. Uh, <laughs> kind of got back by the first public comment, did we? We didn't oh. have it. <laughs> 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 I realized that halfway through, by now. Yeah, just. If it wasn't such a blabber mouth, no one would Nobody know. Nobody would have noticed. <laughs> so, uh, so, public comment. Is there anybody that wishes to, Jackie? It wasn't even on the agenda. Good evening, Jackie Connerman, Regent of the River Assembles Chapter, Daughter Z Mac Revolution, resident 17 and a half years of Nebraska Street. Tomorrow is Vietnam Veterans Day. It's to honor the last day the troops were on the ground in Vietnam, March 29th, 1975. So please join the nation and the River Assemble Chapter, DAR, to thank a Vietnam veteran tomorrow. Also, we will be raising the 50th anniversary Vietnam War Commemorative Partners flag at the Circle of Flags and a lane of a wreath to honor the Vietnam veterans. So join us at noon at the Circle of Flags at the Vietnam Memorial Park on 41 in Skill. All right. And also I dropped off buttons, so you guys will have buttons to wear tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Here's the Thank you, Jackie. Here's what the yep. buttons look like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. Anyone else? Any topic? I'd just like to thank the board for passing our resolution. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> okay, moving on to board comment. Me, Anybody? Me, me, me. Okay. As usual. Um, again, I'm putting a call out there for anybody who would like to work the elections. We've got a couple of applications in for new workers. Um, it's, it's, you only work it on election day. You take a couple of short classes before. It's a paid day that you get for working the elections. You get to learn more about how the system works from within. It's not just, we're not there just for a day to pass you through. There's a lot more to it than that. And um, we need workers. And if you would like to apply to be an election inspector is what they're called. Just come in and fill out an application. Uh, the classes that they're going to give to be certified will be in May. And we'd like to see everybody here. And you are talking about the primary election in August? All the elections. They'll be good for two years, any elections. Yeah. But they have to have the training before they can work any of them. Right. And the, you get $160 for the day, plus you get uh, a small amount for, for, for going to the class. So it's not like you're it's mm. free. You you actually get paid for it. Some days are longer than others, but um, it's a fun job. It's a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It really Just, is. It yeah, is. And we have a lot of good people that work on it. A lot of good friendships have developed from it. A lot of respect for one another. And um, we'd like to see as many faces there as we could. You know. <coughs> so come on in and fill out an application. <laughs> okay. Come on down. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Anyone else? Board member. Okay. 
Then the next thing is we have a closed session scheduled to consider collective bargaining strategy. Uh, so uh, we need to go into a closed session and I need a motion. I'll make a motion we go into closed session. Support. All right. <laughs> uh, the motion is made by Ms. McGuire with support from Mr. Cummings. Roll call, please. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Thank you for coming, folks. Thank you very much.